So I know you're looking at the title of the video like, <laughs> what were you wrong about now? Because you be wrong about so many things when it comes to our Baltimore Ravens. Well, I'm about to tell y'all. We're going to get into this rapid fire version, a question from subscribers. First question came from my guy, Oreo Cookie. He said, number one seed. Hello, Engraven. Hope you're having a good day whenever you're reading this. Some people question whether or not we should want the number one seed due to what happened in 2019. And as you know, we are currently in possession of the number one seed, but not sole possession we do not have sole possession because of the conference record because if the ravens and chiefs both went out the chiefs they would get the number one seed okay so there you go i, I was completely wrong about that and some people had actually um they corrected me politely with respect of course in the comment section which i appreciate it because y'all know hey if i'm wrong about something and like i always tell y'all i am going to be wrong a lot a lot um but yeah just kindly correct me let me know Say, hey, hey, Graven, it's actually this, not that. Uh, and, and in this case, I thought if the Ravens won out, hey, they'll be good to go. Now, hey, Ravens, still win out. They should still win out. They, they need to still win out. You can still take care of your business and then just whoever going against the Chiefs, go whoever that team is. Keep beating those Chiefs. Chiefs keep on losing, man. Let Ravens get that number one seat. Because, again, I know um, Lamar even talked about it. He even talked about it in the interview with Devin McCourty. He even said, man, when, when we getting all that hype, he said, I don't like that. I don't like when everybody talking about us like that. I like when we're the underdog. And I disagree with that heavily because if – how can you be – because I know a lot of Ravens fans, they, they do the same thing. They're like, oh, yeah, we want to be the underdog. How can you be – you, you want to be a top team. Like all Ravens fans, they want the Ravens to be a top team, but at the same time they still want them to be an underdog. It's like, no, you, you, you can't have both. Do you want them to be a team that's scratching and clawing their way into the playoffs? Or do you want to be sitting nice? Do you want to be one of the best teams consistently in the NFL? I know which one I would choose. But anyway, um, yeah, my apologies for that misinformation about the Ravens winning out. Um, because, again, I, I thought that if they won out, they would be good to go. And, I mean, either way, if they win out, they will be in great position for whatever. Um, but they, will, they do have a lot of uh, other people around them. Now, the Dolphins right now sitting at 8-3, and three too. But if the Ravens went out, that means the Dolphins wouldn't win out because the Ravens play the Dolphins on December 31st. So you see how that works out? Um, so we'll, we'll see how everything ends up shaking out. But anyway, back to my guy's question. He said, uh, do you want the number one seed? Okay, I should have read this because, I, yes, I do. I do. He said, anyway, um, I, I personally do. You always take the buy, in my opinion. Plus, Lamar has experience not to have that happen Again, go Ravens. Yes, I would love if the Baltimore Ravens got that number one seed because that would mean home field advantage. And again, home field advantage, it makes a difference. Yeah, Ravens got stomped a couple years back, 2019. They got punched in the mouth. Okay, get over it. Get over it. Like It's like Ravens fans like trying to keep themselves in misery sometimes. Let it go. It was 29th. Yeah, it happened. Okay, and what? So you're going to be like, oh, well, well, I never want the number one seed again. I want to always barely get into the playoffs. No, no get that number one seed. Get, get a top, as top of a top seed as you can possibly get. Let 2019 go. Yeah, it hurt. Ravens got punched in the mouth a couple times. But, hey, it, you, how can you get better at something if you just like, you know what? Oh, I ain't even going to try it no more. I ain't even gonna go for it no more. I'm, you know what? I'm just, I'm done with it. I'm gonna give up. No, man. So, again, the whole underdog thing, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's straight, but no, embrace it. Embrace being good. Embrace, hopefully, this year being great. Next question uh, came from my guy, Be More Dre. He's, hey, what's going on, man? I've been watching your channel for years now, and it's great to see how far you and the channel have come. From the car viz to a tour of M&T Bank Stadium and thousands of subscribers, it's amazing. Wishing you more success. So I appreciate you, Dre. Thank you, man. We ain't come nowhere, though. <laughs> we ain't come nowhere. We ain't go nowhere, man. We still still sitting the same way we've been sitting for the longest in this little chair right here talking to this camera talking to everybody and just letting them know everything that we be wrong about when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens but anyway he said my question is do you think the Ravens game plan to pick on a specific corner I've seen other QBs pick on the third corner a lot it doesn't seem like we do it we have Zay OBJ Bate and Nelly but our receivers never go off oh that's a good question I don't think they really do that I don't think they really Try to attack a certain corner and he, No, I don't Never thought about that before 
Hmm, that's a really good question. No, I, I don't. Uh, he said, um, also, what's wrong with our screen passes? It seems like when teams throw them against us, <laughs> they get chunk plays, but teams are over us uh, when we run them. I think with the screen passes, I, I think what it is is that with the Baltimore Ravens, they um, – a lot of times with the screenplays, they are so expected. They can be as expected. They can be so obvious. Like, oh, Ravens, here, here goes screenplay. And they'll run one, and it'll be successful. Then they'll run another one, and then another one, and another one. And they'll get just screen pass happy, and they'll go crazy with them. So I think teams, that they, they be all over that uh, after, like, the first one is successful, but after like the second or third one, teams be all over it. And Ravens, they don't do enough when it comes to disguising it. Like you could set something up nice with them screenplay. Like you could run one, have success with it, even run another one, and it could be solid. Uh, but then on that third one, you could fake it. You could fake it and then throw a little inside slant or throw a deep, whatever. But I think Ravens need to do a better job of sort of disguising those screen passes, and then I, I think they'll have much more success. Next question. Came from my guy Stone Dubois. He said, someone isn't getting talked about enough. Hey, Graven, it's been a minute since I sent in a question, but with the recent loss of Mark Andrews, it's made me think about who will replace him. Now, I don't think they will be able to truly replace him. The chemistry uh, that him and Lamar had is unmatched. But I'm glad EDC finally started listening to the people sitting at the end of the bar and actually got Lamar some weapons. Yay. What kind of drink you were? What were you sipping on today? Anyway, now for the main point of this message, early on in the season, preseason, we got to see a lot of our depth get put on display since the Ravens chose not to play a lot of their starters. And to be honest, we got to see someone who was making an acrobatic catch almost every game. Who could that be? Huh. I'm trying not to look at the answer, but who is that? Not Charlie Cole. No, not Isaiah Likely. Not this year. Um, Duvernay? Nah, not really known. Um... Nah, well, let's keep moving. Oh. <laughs> he, Tylen Wallace. He said, Tylen Wallace, and yes, I understand he's all the way at the bottom of the depth chart, but where are all Mark's red zone targets going to go? I don't think it's getting talked about enough how much more difficult the red zone will be without Mark Andrews. That's a really good point. Um, because Mark Andrews, you mentioned the chemistry between him and, and, and Lamar Jackson, but also along with that chemistry, what is Mark Andrews like? 6'4, six, 6'5? Six, he's a tall guy. <laughs> tall, a tall. A weapon for Lamar Jackson in the red zone Somebody who can go up and get it Got the long arms, got the length um, So yeah man, they uh, they Don't have that with Well, they got it with Charlie Cola And I say likely they got some big frames there So we'll see how they incorporate them In the red zone, but as far as receivers No, they just got uh, Not smaller stature guys For all of them, but nobody long like that But Lamar has already shown throughout his career he can get it done if, if it's a, even with smaller receivers. So that's not an issue even in the red zone. Because we've seen so many times with him in Hollywood. Like, man, you think that Hollywood, like 5'9", five, 5'8", nine, five, five, nine, like red zone target, <laughs> red zone threat? <laughs> yes, he was. He was. Him and Lamar Jackson, they had something special. But anyway, he said um, Tylen Wallace uh, had two spectacular back shoulder catches in the preseason. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we saw him in more red zone situations, especially without Mark. Thanks for all the amazing content you put out, and I hope the family is doing great. Much love and go Ravens. I appreciate that, man. Uh, that would be an interesting one right there, but like you said, he is all the way at the bottom of the depth chart. Would they allow him to have some playing time on offense? I don't see it. Because, uh, again, Zay Flowers, Odell, Rashad Bateman. Then you still got Nat Nelson Aguilar, too. So you already got four receivers in front of him. Then you got the two tight ends, Isaiah Likely and Charlie Colo. Then you got Gus Edwards. You got Keaton Mitchell. You got Justice. So you got all those guys in front of him. He will be after all of those. So I think it will be very hard for him to really get that shot. Speaking of wide receivers, next question came from my guy, G-Star. He said, Adam Thielen? Ooh, I'm, not, I'm not liking this question already. I just read the title. I ain't liking the question already, but let's continue. He said, Ain't great. Hope all is well. Appreciate all you do for us, Ravens Flock fans. I don't do nothing but talk. Y'all really do everything. You see these, these questions that we're going over? Who's that from? That's from y'all. I ain't doing nothing but talk. <laughs> I don't do nothing special, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all do everything special. Uh, he said, uh, as well, hope everything is good for you and the family. Appreciate it, man. Now, my question to you is, clearly, Adam Thielen is not happy with how the Panthers are doing this year. Bryce Young, even though he's a rookie and has plenty of time to grow, isn't feeding Adam the ball enough, and their OC is not allowing him to be effective. I know he signed a three-year, $25 million deal, but the Panthers, uh, that will have him a, that'll give him a nine mil cap hit. But next year, and a base salary of $5.5 in 2024 and $4 mil for 2025. 
Would you think the Ravens might take a look if Panthers want to possibly trade him? No, I don't. I I I don't. Um, and I mean, no, like, no, solid possession receiver, good route runner, good hands. Um, now when he's gotten his targets, he has produced. Uh, good job on third down stuff like that, but. Uh, as far as trading for and giving up something for Adam Thielen, no, not at this point in his career. I I could see them depending on how everything else shakes out, maybe taking a little bit. Of, maybe I would rather them look in other directions first before an Adam Thielen. See who else is out there and who else could possibly be available next year. Depending on how our wide receiver room shakes up, because it's going to be a lot different. Because Odell, uh, I mean, I think now Odell's been trending more towards staying. But still, we don't know. We won't know till we know. Um, but Nelson Aguilar, one-year deal. Devin DuVernay last year, his deal. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with our receivers. Uh, he also said, since OBJ possibly isn't going to sign with us possibly next year, and even though he's had flashes, he isn't worth 15 mil. Well, <laughs> He said, I would think Thielen would be a bigger threat and get more from them than OBJ. Oh, well, uh, maybe health-wise, yeah. Um, but I think with, with OBJ, it was deeper than just everything on the field. I think it was everything off to just the attention, that, that superstar status, them keeping their quarterback. Like, OBJ brings some a lot of stuff that a lot of receivers just don't. And that's before he even steps on the field. So that's something to think about. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, with the absence of Mark Andrews in this offense, do you think Devin DuVernay will get more of an opportunity? Yeah, I think so. A little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. He said, look, if we look back, Duv was the number one receiver for the past two years. Yeah, at times, he, he was. Uh, truthfully, he is a silent staple in this offense and needs to be used more. Uh, also, okay, so we'll start with that, the Devin DuVernay part. Yeah, Jet Sweep King, that's what he was. But the Baltimore Ravens this year, they removed his crown and they gave it to Prince Zay Flowers. They made him the Jet Sweep Prince. Uh, Devin DuVernay is no longer the king. Um, but, yeah, man, so I could see him being used a little bit more, just just a little bit more, bringing him in a couple plays here and there. Um, but, again, it's, it's a lot in front of him. And you know what? When In a previous question or a couple of questions ago when he brought up Tylen Wallace, I don't even think we mentioned Devin DuVernay as one of the receivers that could be in front of Tylen Wallace too. But even with Devin DuVernay, it's a lot in front of him. Um, Ravens can find ways to use him for sure, but it's, it's still a lot in front of him. Anyway, he said also, with the Chargers struggling to stop the pass, Ravens should take full advantage of airing out the ball to multiple players that haven't got the chance to be involved to prepare for this playoff run. Now, <clears throat> I love that because what that could do, Ravens, like, this is a big game for them because this game, could set, this game sets the tone or it helps set the tone for that last chunk of the season. Because you play the Chargers tonight, Sunday Night Football, and then for the next, you're off for the next two weeks. And then when you come back, and, and you need this break big time because Ravens have played a lot of football. They've done a lot of traveling, and they have played a lot of games in a short amount of time. So you need this break. But if you can go into this break after a very, very nice win against the Chargers, that'll set you up real nice. And that'll give you a nice confidence boost. That'll give you a nice momentum heading into your bye and then coming out of the bye who do they play after the bye i think it's the rams i think at mt bank i think but i'm not 100 percent sure but anyway um that'll be really nice uh so yeah air it out run that ball to whatever you gotta do win all right he said we know the league is based on next man up so getting these few players up to speed in case something happens is imperative also do you think jadavian Clowney should be a raven until he retires hey if it was up to me he would have been a raven Long time ago But yeah I mean the way that he been playing Yeah and it's so funny how how Stuff just takes a turn Because I remember when the Ravens were first talking about Jadavion Clowney I saw a lot of people say Oh no please no not Jadavion Clowney He sucks he's overrated he's injury prone He's this he's that And now I see so many Ravens fans saying Oh we should sign him to an extension I, I love the turnaround He said Kyle Hamilton is the best pick EDC has made In his tenor as a GM And he said hashtag Hamilton, Defensive Player of the Year. 
Shout out to him. Uh, next question came from my guy, David, who is a team. Keep it clean, patron. I appreciate you, David. He said, Ain't Glavin, it's been a while since I sent a question, but I got a simple one here. Do you think it's crazy to say that Kyle Hamilton may be our best player on the team? Oof. Yes, it's not extremely crazy, but it is a, a little crazy, and I'm going to tell you why, but let me finish your question first. He said, I think that there's definitely a chance to say that he's up there in a tier that's only occupied by he and Lamar Jackson. Okay, I'm glad I read the whole thing. Because that's what I was going to say. Like, when you think, oh, and he said, thanks again for all you do for the Ravens in this big community. Let's go, team. Keep it clean. Now, I appreciate you, David. Thank you for everything that you do. Now, um, what I was going to say is, if it's the best player on your team, or even one of the best players on your team, then I think uh, you got to think about how the team does with them, what they do for the team, obviously. But if the team could go on without them and how the team will be without them. Now, with Kyle Hamilton, we know everything that he does for the team, everything he does for the defense. Like, he is everywhere. That dude ain't no regular safety. He ain't no safety. He's a baller. That's his position. But um, if the Ravens didn't have a Kyle Hamilton for a couple of games, how would that be versus if they didn't have a Lamar Jackson for a couple of games? So, I, um, Kyle Hamilton is amazing, and we, ain't take, we cannot take nothing from him. We're not taking nothing from him. So, don't think that. But I will say the best player on the team uh, is Lamar Jackson. Now, this last question, more so a comment. It came from my guy, the legit GOAT. Um, I can't read the whole thing, and I'm, I'm going to tell you all will understand afterwards. He said, Aang Graven just wanted to let the entire Ravens flock know uh, if they would like to stream all the Ravens games or any NFL game. And he said it's, it's an app that you could use. I can't say that on here because that would go like dirt. Like, think about this. Like, my job is youtube youtube google all that the people who have sunday ticket right now is youtube youtube google and all that now if i if i'm sitting here hey everybody this is a way that you can go against the grain and you could beat the system by doing it this way and it goes directly against my employer. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, no. So I, I appreciate what you're doing, legit golden. I get it. And if anybody would like to know what he said, you could just send me a DM or something. But I, I yeah, I, you 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 get it. So I, I I hope that you get it. Hopefully. But anyway, team, keep it clean. This was a fun uh, episode of questions from subscribers. I loved it. This rapid fire, rapid fire, just nonstop, no edit, straightforward. Let's get it. Let's make it happen. I love it because it's so fun, man. And I always appreciate you all's questions, man. I always thank you for that uh, because it makes a big difference and it just makes this that much more fun. Um, so y'all keep doing what y'all been doing. Uh, thank you for support. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. I will see you all later on tonight for the Ravens Chargers Sunday night football, man. I've been waiting all day for a Sunday night. And I know it's going to be a lot of Ravens fans saying, man, today is going by so slow. It's taking forever, man. Why don't we just get there, man? I hate Sunday night football games. Blah, blah, blah. But it's okay because... <laughs> All the time that you're going to spend waiting today for the game to start. <laughs> yeah. Imagine how slow the next two weeks are going to go. <laughs>